Today, I want to talk about how Adam Aaron has finally addressed the illegal shorting and the FUD that Adam Aaron is not on our side. And I also want to talk about what's currently going on over at the SEC and how Gary Gensler may be removed from his position, improving market regulation. So stay tuned and let's make some money. And now I'm going to dive straight in with the key information. So, Adam Aaron tweeted saying Twitter is an incredibly powerful communications vehicle, but sadly it can also be a cesspool of scurrilous attack. He said, I receive so much praise, not all of it deserved, but also venomous untruths are also hurled my way. He said, my view is to rise above it and ignore the hate and to just do what's right. And he elaborated by saying it continues to astound and confound me that some out there hypothesize that I am not on the side of retail investors. He said, I'll say it over and over, I own or have an economic interest in millions of AMC shares and APE units. He said, I'm a retail shareholder. Of course I'm on your side. So again, for all those naysayers saying that Adam Aaron is not on our side, then he's simply selling his own shares to get rich and help those hedge funds. Actually, Adam Aaron is doing everything he possibly can to help us, the retail investors, and improve AMC as a company, extending or prolonging its survival. He said it may boil down to this. Many of you are frustrated and strongly urging us to address market forces that you are convinced are unfair. He said we continuously think about what actions would be wise and credible. Now this part here is the most important part, because Ken Griffin hasn't called Adam Aaron directly and said, Adam Aaron, I absolutely 100% confirm that I am illegally shorting your stock. Because Adam Aaron hasn't had that confirmation from Ken Griffin, he can't just blast synthetic shorting in the public. That obviously comes under slander and Adam Aaron and even AMC itself could end up in court and end up having to pay heavy, heavy fines. Just look at what happened to Elon Musk with Tesla and their 420 announcement. Elon Musk has been in court over the last two years about his funding secured at 420 tweet, which many deemed as market manipulation. So if Adam Aaron starts spreading information that is not necessarily 100% credible, it could actually be Adam Aaron and AMC that may be manipulating the market. And therefore, Adam Aaron is focusing on the good ideas, which is to build up our cash reserves and smartly lead AMC forward. And he also tweeted saying that yesterday I tweeted an M by mistake. Many of you thought I was being less than candid in the denial and that the M must have meant something. And he said, nope, it was just a tweeting error. But today I am tweeting this and it does mean something. The capital letter Y. Now, I don't know if by why he means WHY, as in why is this synthetic shorting going on? I don't know if it's short for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or any of the other days of the week. I don't actually know what a single letter Y stands for. Obviously, Adam Aaron today is indeed tweeting this, and it does mean something. I just don't know what the letter Y stands for just yet. Some are speculating that it could be to vote yes in the upcoming AMC announcement. Some are speculating that the Y is the shape of a fork in the road. And there's a lot of other speculations obviously going on. Now, I don't know what the Y speculation actually stands for, but what I do know is that this is a brilliant tweet with a brilliant point. Lucrative Lou tweeted saying the fact that so many people who once claimed to be an ape are now cliquing together with shorts and paper handed bears makes me so happy because everything we talked about from the beginning has been happening. Many of those people that are tweeting about Adam Aaron being against us are now joining and speaking in and hosting space calls with known short sellers and known FUD spreaders. The fact that supposed past apes that are now saying that Adam Aaron is not on our side are sticking together with known short sellers, I think really says it all. Guys, if you haven't already, be sure to join me over on Moomoo, the sponsor of today's video, by using the link down in the description below. You can currently get up to 15 free stocks, entirely commission-free trading, free level 2 market data, and Moomoo is actually very easy to use and has a very simple UI and tons of technical indicators and advanced trading tools. On top of that, he also tweeted saying that Adam Aaron has said what he has to say. And if you want to maximize shareholder value, that we should vote yes, just like we should have done back in 2021. He said, literally, the only thing that we haven't done in the last three years is listen to our own CEO, because everyone had their own plan or agenda to push for themselves first. We had the SATEC vote count, we had a number of different share counts, we had databases of investors with individual share counts on top of that as well, and tons of other suggestions like investigations into synthetic shorts, but now Adam Aaron is leading the way in his way to fight the shorts. Adam Aaron has tried a number of suggestions over the last three years, a number of which we actually voted no to, so I personally this time am going to vote yes. 
Again, I'm not specifically telling you to vote yes or no, I'm just giving you the data and letting you decide the best way to vote. Now, in terms of Gary Gensler, Bill, who's a member of Congress, has tweeted saying since Gary Gensler won't abide by his own policies and come in to talk, the House GOP will hold him accountable. He said today, as promised, our oversight of the SEC begins with a request for documents surrounding their interactions with Sam Bankman-Fried and FTX official and the Justice Department. So the House Committee of Financial Services is requesting a number of different documents from the SEC and specifically from Gary Gensler relating to their involvement with FTX. The House Committee of Financial Services is obviously very, very suspect with the SEC and specifically Gary Gensler that they are actually helping Sam Bankman-Fried and FTX obtain a regulatory monopoly. They obviously expect some kind of foul play, whether with the SEC as a whole or specifically Gary Gensler, I don't know, but they've requested tons and tons of information. They've demanded this information by 5pm on February 24th, 2023, so that they can perform a full investigation. Now, even though it's not specifically related to synthetic shorting, this could absolutely end up with Gary Gensler being removed from the SEC. And obviously, as a byproduct of Gary Gensler being removed, we'd have a new SEC appointee that could hopefully do something better in terms of regulating the market. And obviously, in terms of market regulation, I'm sure priority number one would be to regulate the stock market as a whole and make it more fair by removing illegal synthetic shorting. Now, Martin has also tweeted saying there's currently been seven trading days on the threshold securities list for AMC. He said it's an embarrassment for the SEC as clearly market makers are abusing their locate exempt under the bona fide market making requirement. Now, he's asked how long Gary will allow this to happen or whether it will be up to the FBI and the Department of Justice and a RICO investigation to clean up this mess. But obviously, as I suggested, as a byproduct of Gary Gensler being removed from the SEC, it could definitely hurry up this investigation. We know that market makers are indeed abusing their bona fide market making exemption or market making requirement. As a result, they're creating tons and tons of illegal synthetic shares every single day and never closing them out. And I personally think this needs to be priority number one on the list of specific things they need to crack down on. Although something I think is very positive is this tweet from Crystal Ball. He tweeted saying brokers like Quest Trade reserve the right to cover short positions at any time. Basically saying that when many of these hedge funds do reach their liquidation point, they will be forcibly liquidated by their trading platform or by their prime broker. He said this means that shares held by their clients that are currently lent out to shorts will be recalled during a margin call when the price runs up. And obviously the recalling of those shares will require the shorts to be closed out of as well. This document says that Quest Trade reserves the right to cover your short positions at any time without prior notice. And this means your borrowed shares will be recalled to the original shareholder, which would require Quest Trade or you to buy them back to close out of your short position. This is basically saying that many trading platforms and prime brokers absolutely will enforce their rights to perform liquidations. And I think this is actually very, very important. We know that AMC at some point will run up and experience the short squeeze, whether it's caused by that market crash or whether it's caused by a specific squeeze catalyst, I don't know for sure. But what I do know is that these trading platforms and these prime brokers will enforce liquidations and margin calls. Now, something that I do think could be a potential very interesting squeeze indicator is this tweet from Rocket Astronaut. We can see that on March 17th, 2023, straight after the known reverse split date or the conversion and reverse split date, we have tons and tons of call options and tons and tons of puts as well. There's actually more options trading right now in March of 2023 than there is in June of 2023, the two year anniversary of the run up and January of 2024, the three year anniversary of the first run up. So far, we're seeing 800,000 out of the money call options and 1.2 million out of the money put options. This is tons and tons and tons of puts, which looks like it's the short's last stand to try and push the price of AMC down. If there's this many put options in the money and out of the money, it means that shorts have already put in millions, if not billions of dollars to try and push the price down. So far, especially over the last month, that has not worked as the price of AMC has actually been increasing really well and the price of Ape as well. So it seems like this could potentially be the shorts final hope at pushing the price down and trying to bankrupt AMC. And this also comes at a very interesting time as the warning signs of the upcoming stock market crash are getting larger and larger.
Morgan Stanley stock chief says a signal that flashed before the 2000, 2008 and 2020 market crashes is once again glaring red. And Morgan Stanley believe that big declines are still ahead for the S&P 500 as of February 2023. It says Mike Wilson reiterated his call on the 6th of February that the S&P 500 has not seen a bottom yet. He's projecting an additional 19 to 20% further downside for the S&P 500 before the market crash is actually finished. And he sees the S&P 500 bottoming between 3,000 to 3,300 points in the first quarter before recovering later this year. So he's basically saying that literally between next week and the next month and a half, he sees the S&P 500 bottoming out a further 25% lower. Obviously, if the stock market does crash 25% over the next few weeks, that would absolutely cause a massive chain of liquidations and trigger the AMC squeeze. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell, because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.